Brother Jimmy. Amen. Well, the Creator has all that we need. That's what this song is about. Well, He's the ripple of the stream, the God of everything. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Well, he was dead, but now he's alive. He has the keys you need not strive. He's my rock and he's my staff. He's my God, he'll make a way. Well, he's all all I'll ever need. Well, he promised in his word that my prayers would all be heard and every little sparrow he would feed. Well, he's the high priest of my soul. He is my highest goal and he's a light in the darkest night that I see he lifts me up when I'm way down he's my God he's holding my crown and some sweet day he's coming after you and me Well, he's all that I need. He's all that I need. Jesus is all I'll ever need. Well, he promised in his word that our prayers would all be heard. And every little sparrow he would be. If you believe that, lift your hands and say, Yes, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jimmy Phillips. Amen for that wonderful song. And we want to welcome all of you that are viewing and listening uh, to this uh, program called Times of Refreshing. We want to see you refresh. We want to see you receive from the bountiful hand of our Heavenly Father. What a mighty God we serve. And He's the one that we love and we honor. And we're here to declare His goodness and His mercy. And to encourage you uh, to know that there's a God in heaven that cares about you. He cares about the problems that you are facing today. He cares about the situation that right now you may be dealing with. He cares, amen, for every one of you. And you need to learn that there's one you can trust, one that you can depend upon to see you through any and every problem that life may bring your way. And so we welcome you and we want to tell you that here at Life and Praise Church, we're located here on Sand Mountain on Alabama Highway 75, just a half a mile from the Alabama-Georgia line. We have services here at Life and Praise every Sunday morning at uh, 1030 is our morning worship service. And, and you are encouraged to come and hear God's wonderful word. And then... At, on Sunday evenings, we have service uh, at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock on Sunday evening, and we encourage you to come for that. And now, on Wednesday evening, we're doing a present study uh, that is dealing with end-time events. Uh, and our uh, study is based on the book called The Harbinger, written by Jonathan Kahn, who is a Jewish rabbi that was baptized in the Holy Spirit 
and God has given him a, a wonderful revelation that relates to 9-11, going back to 9-11, a prophetic word that deals with things that uh, we believe parallels that happened some uh, 2,500 years, 2,600 years ago to the ten tribes of the uh, tribe of Israel when they rebelled against God. God sought to get their attention and get them uh, to come back and he let an event happen. And uh, so uh, Jonathan Kahn parallels what happened uh, there uh, some 2,600 years ago with what happened on 9-11 in, in this nation and is continuing uh, to happen. Other things that uh, he's uh, seen connecting with the Word of the Lord. And we encourage you to come and join us on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. You will be blessed. You will receive important information that will help you. And so uh, we want to uh, share with you what God is doing uh, here at Life and Praise. And we want to thank God for our congregation, the people of God here. And now then we want to take you into the word of the Lord our God. I want to take you to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers, an Old Testament book. And we're going to read a scripture beginning uh, at verse 26 of this uh, 13th chapter of the book of Numbers. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. And they brought back word to him and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Now what he is talking about is the twelve spies that the, Moses had uh, been directed of the Lord to send uh, into the Canaan land uh, for them to spy out because they were going to... Uh, go into this land and conquer this land. And so these uh, men were directed to go in and spy out the land. And uh, uh, so when they came back, these uh, 12 men, this is telling of after they returned from the land and how they brought back word to the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. The land was a land flowing with milk and honey, they said. And they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. They had the proof of how fruitful that land was. And nevertheless, now listen to what's going on. This is, this is really uh, something that should get all of our attention because there's a lesson for us to learn from this. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. They're looking at outward situ situations now. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains of the Canaanites. Uh, they, uh, they dwell by the sea and along the banks of Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us... Go up at once and take possession, for we are well able. But I want you to notice, but the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. They were looking at things from the natural point. But I want you to notice, and they gave the children of Israel a bad report. You know, there's a lot of people that seem to be more drawn toward a bad report than they are a good report. And, and so this began to tell of the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it were men of great statue. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were the, we in their sight. That's through the 33rd verse of this 13th chapter. Now, here, these 10 spies, 10 of the 12 that uh, have returned, they're giving their version, what they see, and it's a negative version. And God was greatly uh, displeased with what 
these people did. And the results of their action caused them to have to wander in the wilderness. That generation from, uh, from uh, 20 years old and up, they were wandering in the wilderness for some 40 years until all of that generation passed away. Why? Because their unbelief kept them from going into the land of Canaan. They looked at the outward circumstances and, and the, they had seen miracle after miracle in God uh, bringing them out of the land of Egypt where they had been captives for some 400 years living under the oppression of the Egyptians and God miraculously set this people through uh, free and then when they got out of the land of Egypt and uh, they came to the Red Sea and, and, and they were frightened because thinking that now then they were going to be destroyed by the Egyptian army uh, which is pursuing after them at this time and uh, God miraculously opened up the Red Sea and let uh, these people walk through the Red Sea dry shod. I want you to know, uh, God was with this people in a special way. But now when it has come to the point uh, where they're to go into the land and, and these spies come back with this uh, negative message and said, we saw giants down there. We were, uh, we were like grasshoppers. In their sight. I want to tell you something. However you, you let other people, uh, you know, whatever you impress other people with to believe, that's what it's going to be. But I want you to know uh, that he's, uh, he tells us, uh, uh, you know, that we're not to allow ourselves to be hindered by our view outwardly of what we're to see. Faith looks at God. And leaves out circumstances. Unbelief looks at circumstances and leaves God out. Amen. Faith is dead to doubt, dumb to discouragement, blind to impossibilities, and knows nothing but success. And so if I have faith in God, whatever the Lord has told me I could have, we can have it. And what I'm dealing with today is facing our giants. They failed to face the giants, amen, that kept them out of Canaan's land. They could have been in the land of their inheritance. God wanted them to enjoy that wonderful land, but their unbelief kept them out of the land. Amen. They failed to take God at his word, even though they'd seen all of the miracles uh, that had taken place that God had worked in their behalf. They still focus on uh, the situation and the circumstances rather than keeping their faith uh, in God and the faithfulness of God to perform. God had proven himself faithful to them and yet now they're in unbelief. I said they're in unbelief and, and I want you to know uh, that we have, we, have to face, uh, we have to face things today. We have giants of opposition. I said, we have giants of opposition. They're not flesh and blood enemies. They're not flesh and blood blocks to where, where we want to go. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 12, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So our adversary is the devil and his emissaries, and, and we've got to recognize that. And then when you set your mind to go with God, the devil will appear. He'll show up to yeah. do his best to block you. Yeah. There will be the giants. I said there will be the giants that will arise to defy you and to do their best to discourage you from going forward with God. I know everybody that's ever made any progress in their walk with God, they have to fight off things that the enemy uses to distract them and to keep them from going on in the things of God. The devil, you know, is, is he's an adversary. The Bible said he's our adversary. And he works to hinder. He's, he slanders. The word devil means a slanderer. And the devil is a slander. He slanders God's people. He slanders God. He slanders the word of God. Uh, we must take what God's word says to us. And I want us to look at the giants. 
we, got, we must face our giants today. And one of the giants that we have to deal with is the same, the th same thing got involved in here with these people. It's the, the giant of discouragement. I said the giant of discouragement. They became di discouraged because they viewed their circumstances and they let that be bigger than God. Amen. They paid attention to the giants rather than focusing upon God. I want you to know that the Lord is pleased when we come to Him in faith. The Bible said without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And so discouragement is a tool that the devil uses. I said it's a tool that the devil uses to block people and to keep them from going on to receive what they could be experiencing in their walk with God. I'd like to call your attention to a situation that's given to us in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, where David and his men, they had been out on an excursion as as they often were involved in, uh, to uh, plunder the enemy's territory. Uh, and so uh, when they returned to their home area, uh, they, they found that uh, there had, the enemy had invaded where they were. The enemy had come in and stolen, taken away their families, and taken away uh, their children, and... and uh, the, the men, when they saw all of this, they were so discouraged and they were so uh, uh, taken up with what had happened until they even threatened to kill David because uh, he, they blamed him to begin with for what had happened. And the Bible says in, in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, in, in verse 6, Now David was greatly distressed, and the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved. They were discouraged, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David, here's what every Christian needs to do, amen, when they face the opposition that comes up. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God rather than giving in to the, dis the discouraging circumstances uh, that he was facing. David encouraged himself in the Lord and he inquired of the Lord, shall we go after our, uh, uh, after our family? Shall we go and uh, uh, what, will we be successful? Will we uh, be able to retake our family? And the, the Lord spoke to them and said, pursue this troop, for uh, you, you shall overtake them, and uh, uh, as you pursue them, you will overtake them and recover everything. I want you to know that everything the devil has stolen from you, he has to give back. He has to return. Thank God he is not to be uh, uh, in charge of uh, uh, everything in your life and hinder you. You are to, uh, you are to come against him. You are to rebuke the devil. You are to take authority over him. Jesus defeated the devil at the cross. <coughs> Excuse me. He defeated the devil and all of his emissaries. And so when David inquired of the Lord, shall we, will, will we recover? He said, you will recover all. So everything that the devil has stolen from any of you out there, I want you to know if you will exercise your faith, know this, that you can have it back. You can retake what the devil has taken away from you. And so they pursued the enemy. Sure enough, they uh, uh, found the enemy. They overcame the enemy. They got everything. Not a person was lost. Not a person had been killed. They got everything and then they took a spoil from the enemy. 
and came back with it. I said they took a spoil from the enemy and brought it back and uh, shared that with other people. I want you to know you can not only have enough of God to meet all your needs, you can be in the place with God where you're, you're because of your victory in the Lord and your walk with God, you can share with other people. Amen. And the joys and the victory uh, of your experience with God because you act in faith. But many people, they look at their circumstances. And this is a lesson. Not to look at your circumstances. Don't focus on the things that have come against you. Focus upon the God, amen, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. Because our God is faithful. Our God takes care of his own. Thank God. And he said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The devil does everything he can to block the church. But I want you to know that the the church of the living God, hallelujah, is still going forth in this hour, and it will triumph over every foe, over everything that the enemy would come up with uh, to block us and hinder. We will triumph. Praise the Lord in the name of the Lord. Thank God. So we're not to be discouraged. Amen. I said we're not to dis be discouraged. We can face that giant of discouragement. Oh, yes, it would, uh, it would like to intimidate you. Amen. Your discouraging situations can be an, an intimidation to you. And many times people, when they're facing things like this and circumstances that are adverse to them, they want to feel like, well, I, I must have done something wrong. I must have failed God somewhere. Now, I know people fail God and all of those things, but I want you to know that they can get forgiveness of whatever they may have done. Amen. And they don't have to live in defeat because of what may be taking place around them. They can arise. Every one of you, amen, take a hold of his word. Thank God because his word is true. Thank God God watches over his word and he backs up his word. Thank God and, and just as David uh, was able to be victorious in recovery, so can you. Everything, everything that you may have lost Thank God the Lord wants you to have it back. Have faith in our God. Have faith in the faithfulness of the Lord our God. For he, thank God, watches over his word. I love that. Amen. He watches over his word. Amen. To perform it. We're told in, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. He said, the, I will hasten my word to perform it. And that really means in the original Hebrew text, it means I'll watch over my word. I'll stand behind it. I will back up what I've said. Thank God so he's not made one promise that he's not able to deliver upon. And so you look unto the Lord for whatever it is. You may be going through difficult times right now. But I want you to know, take courage. There's a God in heaven that answers prayer. There's a God in heaven that cares about you. And let's cast our cares upon him. That's what he wants you to do today. Amen. Cast your cares upon upon him. So the giant of this discouragement, we can overcome it. Yes. Amen. Yes. I said we can overcome it. I, I heard a story once of, uh, where the devil's supposed to be having a, a yard sale and he, he had on sale all kinds of uh, things that he'd used on people uh, to, you know, defeat them. And, and he had one item that the price was so high Nobody was buying it. And so somebody asked him about that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, uh, matter, that uh, item uh, that he, he had so, such a high price on. Oh, that's the tool of discouragement. I've used that more successfully on Christians than any other tool. So that's the reason the price was so high and the devil, nobody was buying it. I want you to know you don't have to succumb to discouragement today. Thank God. Be encouraged. What did David do when he faced the circumstances? He encouraged himself. 
How can you encourage yourself? By getting into the God's Word, taking God's Word. Amen. God meant what He said to you. God is willing, amen, to hear your prayers. And it'll be wonderful uh, to watch what God does in your behalf when you really, truly bring your difficulty to the Lord and trust Him to move in a supernatural way. Another uh, giant that we, uh, that's involved here is fear. You know, in the ninth verse of the uh, 14th chapter of Numbers, he said, Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are bred, and they are pro their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. The Lord doesn't want us to live in fear. Amen. And uh, the giant of fear has intimidated a lot of people. Amen. Fear takes hold. Instead of the circumstances are bad and, and it looks like that everything is so adverse to you, you're not going to make it. But I want you to know, the Bible said God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Thank God you take God's at His word. He doesn't want you to live in fear. Many people live their lives almost daily in a state of fear. You're not to fear what, uh, what the devil is seeking to do to you. Uh, the giant of fear is overcoming, yes, a lot of people, but you don't have to let it bring you down. Thank God your faith in God, hallelujah, and His faithfulness will over enable you to overcome the fear that may be knocking at your door, the fear that may be uh, intimidating you at this moment. The God, thank God, that uh, sees after his own. He said, fear not, little flock. <laughs> that means his children, his people. Don't fear, for your Father knows what you have need of. And thank God you don't have to live a life of fear. None of us have to live in that state. Thank God because we've got a God that cares about His own. He watches over us. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Is He your shepherd today? I shall not fear. Praise God. You don't have to fear. Amen. Because you've got a shepherd that is watching after me, after you. He watches after every one of His people. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me in paths uh, of righteousness for His name's sake. Thank God, this God that we serve, even though, He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil while thou art with me. Amen. Amen. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Praise God, you have anointed my head with oil. Amen. My cup's running over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank God you don't have to live in fear. God bless you. Take his word today and be encouraged in your walk with him. God bless you as we leave you. Be listening next Sunday at 9.30. Uh, that's Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be here again sharing with you the word of the Lord. So God bless you now as we leave you. Praise the Lord. Well, he's the ripple of the stream. The God of everything. He's the Alpha, the Omega. The beginning and the end. Well, he was dead, but now he's alive. He has the keys you need not strive. He's my rock.